Let's turn in our Bibles, if you would please, tonight to the book of Philippians chapter 4, where we left off last week. And as you turn there, if you would please say this after me. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Tonight I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight as we continue on in our study, we've been teaching on the subject of the Word living in us. We looked and we talked about the fact that Jesus said in John's Gospel, chapter 6, that he was the bread of life. And we know that the word needs to abide in us. Jesus said, if, my, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you will and it'll be done unto you. And last week we left off here talking in Philippians chapter 4. And I want to take up where we left off last week as we're talking about the word living inside of us. Once we begin to grab hold of this, and, and you know my heart, you know how I feel about the Word. Uh, I'm, I'm a stickler for the Word, and I really believe with all of my heart that this is the most needed treasure in the body of Christ today. The body of Christ doesn't need a lot of games and, 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 and things going on. A lot of, uh, I call them frills and fluff in the church. We don't need that. We need the word of God because that's what's going to get us over in life. And what's sad is when you see the majority of the church world not succeeding in their Christian walk because wherever they go, they're not getting the word. But when you get the word of God and you get it on the inside of you and you begin to apply that word to yourself on a daily basis. See, I'm not just talking about on Sunday morning or Wednesday night, but I'm talking about applying the word every single day. For years, you know, people would say, yeah, pastor, but that's your job. You know, you're, you know, that's, that's what you do. I was doing this before I became a pastor. Amen. I was doing this when I was in the secular business world. I always made it a point to get in the word. So when people try to come off with the fact, well, you know, that it's because you're the pastor. No, when I was working in my own restaurant and I was working 15 to 16 hours a day. Some of you only work eight hours a day. And I was working 15, 16 hours a day. I still found time. You can ask my wife. I still found time to get into the Word every single day. Amen. And so we can do it, but it's, it's a decision that we have to make to get that Word inside of us. And when we do, when we get that Word inside of us and it becomes, begins to become a part of our lives, Amen. the bread of life, like Jesus said, when that bread of life is inside of us, and, we, and it sustains us, like, like natural food will sustain your physical body. Then you can come to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, where Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, or which strengthens me. And I told you last week, we, we can go either way with that, who or which, either one. Because it is the anointing that is, that is in the Word, because the, the anointed one and His anointing is in you and I. Amen? Amen. So I left off last week talking about the fact that God, when we, when we grab hold of this, God is simply saying, when we make this confession of our faith that we can do all things through Christ, God has re- assumed full responsibility for his children. Amen. And see, that's one of the biggest challenges in the church world is to get people to understand that you're not going to be able to do it on your own. Too many times people fail in life because they're trying to do it on their own. We can't do it on our own. We have to have the Lord. We've got to have his word. It, it, it's, what, it's what carries us over. Amen. And when you, when you get, let that word get a hold of you, then you can make sure that you can do all things through Christ. Why? Because his word says you can. And all it is is just confidence in the word. And we've talked, we've been lately on Sunday and, and Wednesday night, we've been talking about confidence. And when you, when you begin to develop a confidence in God's word, and it's, it shouldn't be this way, but in the, in, the, in the church, the modern church world today, when you start talking about your confidence in God, they think you're being arrogant. And it, it, arrogance has nothing to do with it. 
It's the fact that you know who you are. You know who your heavenly father is. You know who your savior is. And I really believe this. I mean, I believe there are a lot of people in the church world today who they, they don't, and I've said this for years, and this is, not a, this, this is what I'm about to say. This is not criticism, and it's not a put down. It's just simply an observation. And that is, I, I've, I've said this for years, that there's a difference between a Christian and a believer. And when I say that, people look at me like, what are you talking about? Well, Christians know about the Lord. That's right. But believers have a relationship with him. Amen. Amen. They've developed a relationship with him. They just don't know about him. They know him. Yeah. You see, I've spent the last 20 some years getting to know this man here. I know this man. Okay. But I'm sure that his immediate family knows more about him than I do. Why? Because they've probably known him longer. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, my wife, I thought I knew her when I married her. You did too. You thought you, you thought you knew your husband. You thought you knew your wife when you married him. You thought, you, honey, you didn't know them till you started living with them. You couldn't wait to get walk down the aisle and say, I do. And then, you, the, the, then after the first week or second week of marriage, you're thinking, what in the world did I get into? Huh? No, we've all done it. But as you spend time together and you get to know one another, you see, then that's the same way we get to know God, by trusting in him, trusting in his word. Amen? Amen. So when we get to the point to where we say, hey, you know what? The word is in me. I'm, I'm living and I'm abiding in the word and the word is living and abiding in me. Now I have confidence. I have confidence in God, that he will back up his word. Amen. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. Amen. Well, how's he going to do it? I don't know. I don't have any idea. All I know is I have to just believe him and trust him. That's yeah. all I have to do. I mean, I mean, that's all we can do. Because, you know, I've learned over the years. I've learned over the years that the government will let you down. Family will let you down. You might as well say amen to that. People in church will let you down. Huh? But God will never let you down. Amen? So we have to come to that realization that when we make our confession of faith that we can do all things through Christ, that now God has assumed all responsibility for my life. Because I've turned my life over to him. Now it's his responsibility. It's his responsibility. Some, you know, people say, well, you talk to the Lord that way? Yes. He's my father. Amen. I talk to my father like I'm his child. I am his child. You're his child. You see, kid, kids, you, you know, uh, you all have children. You, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, children, well, okay, maybe not all of you, but some of you, you have children. And when your children come to you and they, they want something, you know, my kids used to pull this on me all the time. Dad, I, 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 Dad, can we have this? Well, we'll see. No, 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 no. We'll see nothing. No, e either we can or we... Or, and my daughter, she was good at it. She said, Dad, you, you confess and you tell everybody we're rich. Are we or not? <laughs> well, she had a point. So it's, Dad, can I have this? I guess you can. <laughs> what am I telling her? I'm not rich. I'm, I'm, I'm confessing I'm rich, and then she says, are we or not? Well, I've, I'm, but, but you know what? She, one thing about her, she's not afraid to ask me. No, because she knows she can come to Dad. And that's the way the Father wants us to come to him. And Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I know that you assume full responsibility for me and my life. Lord, this is your ministry. This is your church. These are your people. And yet preachers want to get into a fuss. Oh, well, they're trying to steal my people. You're not my people. I may be the pastor, but you know what? But ultimately, you belong to God. And you know something I had to learn a long time ago was this. God loved you a lot, lo a lot longer than I have. Amen. He, he loved you before I ever knew you. That's right. And he loves you. Yeah. I love you. But ultimately, you're not looking for my love. You're looking for his love. Amen. Amen. 
So this is the confidence we're talking about and knowing that he's assumed the full respons responsibility over our lives. Amen? Amen? Now go over to Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to look at something I know you're all familiar with. But let's look at it, Proverbs chapter 3. And what this would do is it'll help, it'll help us to look at what the word says concerning this trust. And see, trust will build confidence in a person. If you can trust a person, you will have confidence in them. You understand what I'm saying? And see, that's, now I always, I go back, and I, I know, I mean, if you're married and you have a spouse, you understand what I'm talking about. But this is why I can trust my wife, why I can have confidence in her. I trust her. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you may have a husband or a wife that you have confidence in. You have trust in them. Well, as you learn that person and you put your confidence and trust in them, as you trust them, that confidence will begin to build mm -hmm. and build and build. And so my wife has learned over the years, and we've learned over the years with each other, that if we, if we say something to each other, you know, that we're going to do something, it's okay for us to hold each other accountable. That's right. See, in some marriages, I mean, you, 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 you get into a mess and when, when one, one's holding the other accountable. But you said this, why don't you hold that over my head? Well, they need to. That's right. They need to because you gave them your word. Yes. See, when God, see, God's not like us. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible doesn't say that God does not lie. No, the Bible doesn't say he doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he cannot lie. Right. It's not that he doesn't, he can't. Yeah. So he can only tell the truth. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Did you find Proverbs chapter 3? Mm -hmm. Now look at verses 5 and 6 and look what, Look what Solomon writes here. He says, trust in who? In the Lord. Trust in the Lord with what? Heart referring to your spirit, man. All right. See, you can't trust God with your head. He's talking about your heart or your spirit. man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart or your spirit and lean not unto your own understanding. Now, why does he say don't lean to your own understanding? Because your own understanding is limited. God is what we would call, he is unlimited. Amen. See, our minds are what we refer to as finite. Huh? God is infinite yeah. or infinite, in, 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 infinite. Uh -huh. right. are, are you hearing me? There, there's, no, there's no end to God. There's no limit to God. Amen. When you think about our father, that he knows everything. Mm -hmm. He is all knowing. He knows the, 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 the past, I mean, he, he knew the end from the beginning. That's, right. That's what Isaiah said. Mm -hmm. He knows everything about you. That's right. I mean, can you, can you imagine that? There's, there's not another person on this planet that knows everything about you. Amen. Not even your mate. That's right. But God knows everything about you. He knew the day, he knows how many hairs are numbered on my head. He don't have to count on my count my head as much as he does some of you, but uh -huh. but still, he, the Bible says he he knows every hair on your head is numbered. Right. Jesus said it this way in in in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Matthew's gospel. Jesus said, if he cares about the fowls, the birds of the air, how much more, more does he care for you? Uh -huh. Huh? So Solomon says here, he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding because your own understanding is limited. Amen. Okay? In all of your ways, verse 6, in all of your ways, what? Acknowledge, acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. Now what's going to happen if we acknowledge him? How many of you need your, your paths directed tonight? Yeah. Huh? Amen. Doesn't the Bible say the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord? Yeah. I don't know about you, I need my steps directed daily. Right. Daily, each and every day I need my steps directed. Yeah. Huh? Because you know what I've, I've learned over the years? I can get in my own way. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> I can get in my own way. Mm -hmm. But when I've, if I'm trusting in the Lord with all my heart and I'm not leaning to my own understanding, then I, I will acknowledge him in all of, all of my ways. Mm -hmm. I'll acknowledge him. And then he will direct my path. How many know the Lord, each, he has a path for each and every one of us? Yeah. Huh? Someone asked me, you know, I just, I just wish, Pastor, I just knew, I just knew 
wish, I wish I knew what the will of God for my life was. Well, you ready? Go tell people about Jesus. That's the will of God for your life. Well, I thought that was only for the preachers and the ministers. Well, we're all ministers. No, I'm not a minister. I'm a bus driver. No, you're a part-time bus driver. But you're a full-time minister. Amen. Amen. We're all ministers. See? And see, a lot of times, you know, people just don't want to take that step of faith. They don't want to minister to people. They go, and they'll, they'll cop out, well, well you know, I'm just, I'm just a shy person. No, you're not. You're not shy on the job. You're not shy among your family. Are you? No. Well, well, no, the reason that a lot of times Christians don't say anything and the reason they won't minister to people is the fact that they don't want to mess up. And the only way you're going to mess up is by not being in the Word. Not letting that Word live inside of you. Are you, are you with me? And I, I've shared this testimony years ago. I remember before I came to the Lord, um, I, was, I, would, I was working in the restaurant, you know, and, and uh, I, would hear, I would hear people come in, you know, they would come into the restaurant, you know, after church and stuff, and I would hear them sitting at their table or the booth or whatever, and they'd be talking about the Lord. And I'm telling you, I wasn't even saved, but I wanted to get in their conversation. You know, because I wanted to hear what they were talking about. But I couldn't. Why? Because I didn't know anything. And I, I, you know, if I would have got involved in their conversation, I would have looked like a, a blooming idiot, you know, because I didn't know anything. But I tell you what, when I gave my heart to the Lord and I started getting into the Word of God for myself, things changed. Amen. And there was, the only way I can describe it is there, there is a holy boldness that will come over you. It's a holy boldness. It'll come over you. Amen. Huh? That anointing will kick in. And you don't, you don't have to know what you're going to say to somebody. Amen. Do you know you can win somebody to the Lord by just saying good morning to them? Yeah. yeah. You can do it just by saying good morning to them. Put it, go to work with a smile on your face. Amen. Instead of joining in you know, with all the, all the gossiping and all the, the whining and crying going on in the, in the, in the in the office at work, you know, and listen to everybody's problems and joining in with them and telling your problems. You should walk in with a smile on your face and say, praise God, I'm victorious. Praise God, I win. I'm on top, can't be stopped. I'm victorious in everything that I do. Well, they're going to think you're crazy, but there'll be that one person that wants to know why you're always up. And now you've opened the door where you can minister to them and you can tell them about the Lord. And they're, those are the ones that are ready. When, I mean, because those that come to you, they're, they're ready for, those are ripen for the pickings, as it were. They're ready to be picked. Amen. Amen. So he said, trust in the Lord. Say, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Say, I'm trusting in the Lord, in the Lord. With, all heart, with all my heart. I'm not leaning, I'm not leaning to my own understanding. My own understanding. But in all, my ways, in all my ways, I'm acknowledging him. And the Lord, and the Lord is, directing is directing my path. See, that's, and, and see, this is confidence. This goes back to confidence. Through trust comes confidence. And you'll have confidence that he is, as you're trusting in him, you'll have that confidence that, you know what? God said it in his word. I believe it. Amen. I had a man ask me one time. He said, that just sounds like blind faith to me. That's what I said. Well... I, one thing for sure, I, I told him, I said, well, one thing is for sure, I trust God's word more than I trust your word. Amen. Well, how do you do that? How do you just take God at his word? I said, because this is God's word talking to me. And that's all I can do is take him at his word. I have never, God has never lied to me one time. Not once has he ever lied to me. Really, really what, what the Lord is saying to us He's saying this, he's saying, I want, you, I want you to trust in your heart. I want you to trust me with your whole heart, with full confidence, with full confidence. Why? Because I can make you wiser than all of your enemies. And he can. He can make you wiser than all your enemies. He can make you the master over any and every circumstance that you might have in life. You know, I, I still have, uh, there's, there's times when people, you know, they don't understand me a lot of times, you know, and, and, 
and I get it. I, I, I get it sometimes, you know, because, um, and I'm only bringing this up because uh, I get called on occasionally to do funerals. And funerals don't move me. Okay? And I, 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 because I just, I just have to trust God. And um, so when I see people and I see, the, I see the family, my heart goes out to the family, not f- for the loss of the loved one. My heart goes out to the family for the ignorance of the word that they have. Because Christians, believers, believers should know better. And so someone told me the other day, they said, you know, what I've learned is, is that funerals are really not for the dead. It's, they're for the living. And that's why I told my wife, I said, it, you know, if I go before her, I don't want a funeral. I don't. And I mean that. And you better hold her to it, Pastor Ennis. I don't want no funeral. You know why? Because I don't want nobody to come. Oh, and, 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 and. And because uh, I've seen people, you know, with, you know, they, they get in a, they get in a quandary as well. Do I have a closed cast or, casket or open casket? Well, what do you want to open it for? Why, why do you want to look at dead people? I've been in funerals where people try to get in the coffin. I've, I've never, I, and I've been in some, I've been at some funerals where I'm, 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 I'm telling, these are believers now. Born again, spirit filled, tongue talking believers. And one day they're at the funeral, and, and I mean, I don't, they're not crying. They're screaming. They're screaming at the top of their lungs. And the next day you see them in the restaurant, and they're with their friends, ah, ha, 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 like nothing happened. And I thought, how phony. How phony. See, I don't want any phoniness at my funeral because I don't want to have a funeral. And the reason... Funerals don't affect me is because I understand death. I understand the fact that when you leave this life, you just go to be in the presence of the Lord. You're not dead. You're not dead. You're very much alive. You're more dead people, people that have died before us that are born again. They're more alive than you and I are right now. Why? The Bible says to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. So they're more, they're in the presence of God. They're trying, they're already where we're trying to get. That's right. That's right. That's right. Am I making sense to you? And so a lot of times people don't, and it's not that I'm anything special. I'm not. It's just that things, things just don't move me a lot. Things don't move me a lot. Because I, I've, I've, I'm, I've learned over the last 43 years, I've learned and I'm still learning on a regular basis. I'm still learning how to trust God's word. I'm still learning how to get that word down inside of me. Amen. So when I open my mouth, it comes out. That word comes out. That word is alive. Amen. Am I making sense to you tonight? So God is just saying this. He's saying you can be the master over your circumstances. I don't want any circumstance to be able to control me. None. 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 No circumstance, no problem, no situation. I've shared this, I've shared this with you. My, I think my, my dad, in, in January, he's been gone three years now. My, my mom, she died 20 years ago. She went, she went to, to be with the Lord 20 years ago. But my dad, three years ago. And I still haven't shed a tear. But, but, well, you're just cold hearted. No, I just, I know where he is. Well, don't you want him to come? Don't, don't you want to see him again? Well, I will when the time comes. Do, don't you want him to come back? No. Why would I want him to come back here to this mess? This world. Look at the shape this world's in. See, that's selfishness. That's selfishness. Amen. All right, go back to Philippians, the fourth chapter again real quick. Now, we looked at the 13th verse, but I want to look at the 11th verse this time. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Because I'd mentioned the fact that God can make us master over our circumstances, regardless of what they are. But I want to read this to you, what Paul said here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. He says, not that I speak in respect of want, 
For I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Now, I want to read it to you from another translation. It reads this way. It says, Paul says, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therein to be independent of circumstances. I like that. I have learned to be independent of circumstances. So what's he saying here? He wants us to know that we have the ability, the ability to be independent from those circumstances, regardless of what they are. See, too many times Christians, Christians really don't have any business getting involved in, in worldly conversations, but Next thing, if you come, why? You know, why, why am I saying this? Because see, the world will talk you out of believing God if you if you let them. They'll they'll talk you out of believing God, and they'll try to get you to join in in their conversations, and try to get you start to start talking negative and anti the Word. And if that happens, then you're going to fall right into the trap. And you know, one of the how many of you remember back in two thousand seven and two thousand eight? When the, the financial collapse happened, you all remember that? All right. I made a vow and I made a promise to God that was not going to happen to me ever again. Amen. Never again. So when people start talking to me about, you know, the economy, come on, let's just be real. It's going to crash, but I'm not going to participate in it. So if I'm not going to participate in something, why do I need... Someone asked me the other day, well, who, who's, who's ahead in the World Series right now? I have no idea. I don't know. You know why? You know how many games of the World Series I've watched? I don't know who, who won the Super Bowl last year. I don't know who won the NBA championship last year. I don't, know who, I don't even know who won the World Series last year. I don't care. Why? Because it doesn't affect me. See, now I could, I could fall into that trap. Huh? I could get into that financial gloom and doom of, well, you know, the stock market, this, that. I don't, I don't invest in the stock market. So what do I care what happens in the stock market? Well, it's going to affect the whole country. The Bible says a thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. I'm not doing it. I participated in that mess in 2007 and 8. As a matter of fact, uh huh, her and I, we lost our entire retirement plan. Oh, yeah, because it was tied to the S&P 500, and it wiped us out, wiped our retirement out. Well, since then, God's restored it. Amen. But I pulled out of the stock market, baby. I, I pulled my, uh, no, 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 no more. I'm not doing that. I'm not letting the world have any control over me any longer. Now, I'm not telling you to you do whatever you want. That's your business. I'm not telling you to do what I did. But you do whatever. But I'm just simply saying, I'm not doing it. And it's not going to control me. Not this world system. No, no. Why? Because I belong to heaven's economy. And I've learned over the years that investing, because people come to me and they say, well, Pastor, where should I invest? I got some money. Where should I invest it? I just tell them, well, to me, I says, for me, the kingdom of God is the best place to invest. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Now, I think gold is good. I think silver is good. And I think cattle is good. That's what Abraham was rich in. So if God made Abraham rich and there was no New York Stock Exchange, and he became rich in gold, cattle, and silver, well, does he love Abraham more than he loves us? So, you, you know, I mean, I'm not going to tell people where to invest. You know, I, I got a little bit of gold. I got a lot of silver. And my next, my next project is to invest in cattle. Amen. Why? Because regardless of what happens, if you got some cows, you're going to eat. That's right. Amen. Amen. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 tonight. See, we're talking about the word living in us. When the word lives in us, you're going to have confidence. You're going to have, uh, well, I could say it that way, boldness. You could have boldness. You'll have confidence. But it's not arrogance. It's confidence. Amen? 
when you get that word in you. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, look at verse 4. Paul said, And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves, because we're not, to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Amen. Say, God is all sufficient. God is all sufficient. Say, my God, my God supplies, supplies all, my needs, all my needs according to His riches in glory, riches in glory. By, Christ by Christ Jesus. Now see, the more you speak that, the more you confess that, the more you get that down into your spirit, man, the more you will begin to believe it. And the more you begin to believe it, the more you'll trust in it. Amen. That's confidence. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. confidence. That God is your supply. Mm-hmm. He's supply. He's the all-sufficient one. Yeah. I'm not. As a matter of fact, one of God's names, you know, God revealed himself, you know, in different ways to the Old Testament uh, patriarchs. And, and he, you know, he revealed himself as Jehovah. Uh, he revealed himself as Adonai. He revealed himself as El Shaddai. And that's always been one of my favorite ones because the word El, El Shaddai translated is the many-breasted one. And I never will forget when the Lord gave me revelation on that, the many-breasted one, how that God has a breast for each and every one of his children. You say, well, what makes it so important? Because as a new mother, that's how she sustains her baby. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I mean, all things being equal now. You understand what I'm saying? See? And as long as there's a demand put on that breast, there will be a supply. It's when the demand is taken off Mm -hmm. that the breast dries up. See? And so God is saying, hey, I've given each one of my children a breast. I just want them to keep putting a demand on that supply. And as long as there's a demand there, the supply will be there. But when you stop putting the demand on God, then the supply dries up. Amen. Amen. And, and, and God, now God's not drying up. It's just the fact that the church, the church of Jesus Christ, a lot of times, they just stop. Because, here again, because we try to do it in ourselves. Amen. And you can't. You can't do it. Your job is not the answer to your prosperity. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Sorry to mess you up. No, I'm not saying you don't need to work. Everybody needs to work. The Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. That's not, but if that's where your trust is, then when they go to start talking layoffs, you're going to walk around in fear. And panic. Right. I remember my dad years ago, and uh, because he was a he belonged to the union, and I remember about every four years or so they would they would start talking about, oh we're going to strike. The Teamsters are going to strike. We're going to go on strike with this and that. And I mean, all he had to do was come home and open his mouth. And next thing, my mom was walking around, and, oh they're gonna, your dad's going to be out of work. Hey, they're going to lay your dad off. They're going to oh, they're going to go on strike uh, and this and that. They haven't even gone on strike yet. And I mean, fear just gripped, just gripped them. Mm -hmm. Now, this was before they got saved. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I'm a kid now. But it affected the whole household. It affected the whole house. You don't need to be talking that mess in front of your children. Huh? But see, if they they had their children in church, my mom and dad, the way they should have, Huh? And I'm not talking about just going to the Baptist church once in a while where all we heard was a bunch of negative and doubt and unbelief and all that stuff. But if they would have had us in a good word church where we're being fed and taught the word of God, we would have never let that enter into our home. Mm-hmm. We'd have been walking around through the house saying, my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Huh? I'm not worried about being out of work. Mm-hmm. We'd, we'd, have been, we'd have been confessing a thousand will fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand and it won't come near us. I remember my dad having to walk a picket line. I remember it as a kid. I mean, but you know what? God took care of us here the whole time. How many of you ever had to worry about a job? Huh? You don't have to worry about a job. 
The job's not your source. Amen. God's your source. I know that I, you, maybe you didn't raise your hand tonight, but I know some of you have thought about your job. Oh, yeah. But you see, your job is not the, the sum total of, of everything. God is the sum total of everything. Amen. Him and his word. Amen. Amen. So you have the ability, or God's ability, I should say, you have God's ability in your life Amen. right now, right this very moment. You, you, you have it. Amen. You have it. On the job, you have it in the store, in the market, you have it in the classroom, you have it in the home. Wherever you are, you have the life of God and the ability of God right now in you. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So, God has placed different people in different occupations. The mechanic, he has wisdom to be a mechanic. The lawyer has wisdom to be a lawyer. The doctor has wisdom how to be a doctor. I wish I could say all pastors have wisdom to be pastors, but they don't. Well, that's right. but, but, the, but the reality is this. It's our responsibility to teach the Word of God. See, my, my, my job, my assignment is to not to get you pumped up and to have a, a pep rally, to get you all excited. Right. My job is to take the Word of God and teach it to you and explain it to you and break it down to you where you can understand it and then take that, what you've learned, and apply it to your life. That's right. you, know, you know, when we went to school, we had different classes. How many of you remember classes? Mm -hmm. huh? you had, how many had a math class? Yeah. You know why they taught you math? So you could learn how to add and subtract. Remember how many had an English class? You know why they taught us English? So we could learn to read and write. Okay, I better stop there before I get in trouble. <laughs> No, because nowadays they don't teach them anything. That's true. The teachers are too busy being uh, babysitters. <laughs> Highest paid babysitters in the world. No, it, no, but, but see, that you went to school to learn things. Why? Because they were smart enough then, at least when I went to school, mm -hmm. they were smart enough then to realize that as we grew older in life, they would teach us things that we could apply to our lives that would be useful in our adult lives. Where would you be today if you couldn't read? Where would you be today if you couldn't add and, add, add and subtract? Don't, don't answer that. No, but, but you understand what I'm saying? I realize that some people had their favorite subjects. One of my favorites was history. I loved history. I, just, I loved history. I, lo I've, I love history more now than I did then. But I enjoyed it. And the older I get, I want to learn more and more and more. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't ever want to stop learning. Not even, especially in my walk with God, I never want to stop learning about the Lord and, and His Word. I never want to stop learning. I want to continue learning. This is why I, 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 I harp on this so much. I guess I want, and I can't make it happen, but I want you to love and, and want the Word of God as much as I do. I want that. But I can't make it happen. I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. So, go over to Psalm 27 real quick. Psalm 27. Is this making sense to you tonight? Yeah. Any pastor who loves his people will teach them the word. If you genuinely love the people, you'll teach them. I really, I believe that. I really do. Psalm 27. Look at verse 1. David says, The Lord is my light. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Amen. Now that's a good question. Ask, you, ask yourself that question right now. Who, 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 who are you afraid of? You know a lot of Christians, you know, you know one of their biggest fears? You know, you know who it is? The IRS. 
You know why you're afraid of the IRS? Why do you think they're afraid of the IRS? Because they're, they're cheating. Christians! That's right. Because they're cheating on their taxes. See, but if you're not cheating, you don't have to, you don't have to be worried about anything. That's right. Huh? Because, I mean, I don't like the Internal Revenue Service. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just simply saying that, but why do you have to be afraid of them? You know, if I had it my way, I'd, I'd get rid of the Internal Revenue Service. There wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any taxes. Huh? Are you hearing me? I mean, you go to work, and 35 to 40 percent of your income goes to taxes. Which, which one a hundred years ago, none of those taxes that you're paying now were in a, were in effect. But they are now. I mean, every time you turn around, you're being taxed on your tax now. Did you know that? Yeah. I was I was talking to the Social Security man here the other day, and where it's the other day, a couple of years ago now, and he said, um, you know, I had a, I had applied for Social Security, and he said, uh, well, you got to wait because you're still working, you, you got to wait. And I said, but it's my money, I, I paid into it. He said, well, I can give it to you, but you're going to have to pay it back in taxes. I said, it's already been taxed. <laughs> they don't care. They're going to tax your income again. That's double taxing. So I said, so what do you want me to do? He said, wait. Said, wait for what? He goes, wait till you're 67, and he goes, we don't care how much you make then. We don't care if you're still working. We don't care how much you make. You, you can draw it off. <laughs> the Lord, David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Some, some people in church, they're, they're afraid of everybody. They're afraid of the dogs. They're afraid of the cats. They're afraid of their neighbors. They're afraid to go out at night. They're afraid to drive. Some people are afraid of everything. He goes on and says, The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Wow. I like the first part where he says, The Lord is my light. The word light means wisdom. Salvation is our redemption from salvation. Did you catch that? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Mm-hmm. We've been redeemed from the, from the evil one. Remember we read, read it a couple weeks ago in, uh, in Colossians where it says that we've been translated out from the kingdom of darkness and we've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. See, we've got, we've got authority over the enemy. You don't even have to be afraid of the devil. I've had, I remember when I first came into the word of faith years ago and I was going to a particular church and I had people, I man, man, I was on fire with this stuff, man, I'm telling you. And I was finding out who I was in Christ and I had people that I was going to church with, they said, oh, you better be careful about talking like that that you may make the devil mad. I may make the devil mad. I hope I do make him mad. Because I've said this for years. If you don't make him mad, he's going to make you mad. Amen. I have no fear of the devil. I have no fear of what man can do to me. I have no fear. I don't have any worries. No worries, no fears. Why? Because the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? So no matter what the condition is, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, financial, our assistance and our support and our help comes from God. Amen. That's why David said, I look to, to where my help comes from. Amen. I look to, my, to where my help comes from. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So God's given you, whether you know it or not, he's given you a song in your heart. Mm-hmm. Amen. He's giving you a song, and that song is to, is to go around and just say, Lord, I just want to praise you and thank you. Just sing to him, say, Lord, I, I love you. I thank you. You are the light of my, of my world. You are my strength. I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm not afraid of anything, Lord, but I, my trust is in you. I love you, Lord. I thank you for your goodness, and just praise him and thank him because he cares about you. He has assumed full responsibility for your life. Amen? Amen. All right, go over, to, uh, go over to Psalm 46 real quick. I want to hurry this up tonight. Give me, give me another two, two or three minutes if you can. Is that okay? All right. Psalm 46. Say amen when you get there. Psalm 46, 
look at verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Did you catch that? Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Wow. You catch that? Who are we going to fear? See, he's able to meet every need you have, take care of every need, whether it's financial, like I said, social, economical, whatever it might be, health-wise, God's able to do it. I was, I was watching earlier today, I don't, know, um, I don't know how many of you saw the movie years ago when it first came out, but there was a, there was a movie that came out, and uh, it was called Oh God. You remember that movie? And more questions, if, if, if Christians, if Christians would just watch that movie. Now, there's a couple of things I didn't agree with it in there, okay? Because they referred to luck a few times, and with God, there is no luck. That's right. But if Christians would just watch that movie, they could learn more from that movie. Whoever wrote the, the script for that movie, they had some biblical background, I'm sure. Because throughout the movie, he, God kept telling the man in, in the movie, he kept telling him, I've given you everything you need. Yeah. He kept saying, God, why don't you do something? He goes, why don't you do something? Yeah, right. yeah. I've given you everything you need. He said, I've given you choice. I've given you free will. And he said, Lord, what is it that you don't like about the earth? He said, I hate the killing. I hate the evil that's in the world. He said, I hate Starving, the starving children. He said, the children, they're starving. He goes, my children shouldn't starve. No reason for it. And just, he made a whole list of things going on. But as long as there's a devil in this world, there's going to be wickedness in high places. And folks, that's what's going on right now in the world today. Huh? I would, I would say the majority of the people in the, in, in the world, the majority of the people are good people. They're not bad people. They're good people, but there's a devil in the world. Right. And the devil influences even good people. That's right. That's right. And as long as he can keep influencing. Anybody ever heard of a guy named Paul Harvey? Yeah. Yeah. If you ever get a chance, just pull him up on YouTube. And he has this little five or six minute speech that he gave. Years ago, I think it was in the early 60s, and the title of it is, If I Was the Devil, What Would I Do? And when you listen to it and get to the end, as he closes, he said, If I were the devil, I'd keep doing exactly what I'm doing. And he explains everything that's going on in the world today. He talked about it 50, 60 years ago. And it's going on right today. If I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what I'm doing. But see, we don't have to yield to it. Why? Because the greater one indwells us. And his word lives in us big. Amen? Amen. Say, the word lives in me big tonight. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet tonight. I want you to lift one hand toward heaven tonight. And say this after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare tonight. That the greater one indwells me. I thank you that no weapon formed against me can prosper. But everything I set my hands to prospers in Jesus' name. I will not fear. I will not fear man. I'll not fear things. And I'll not fear the devil. But you, Father, are the only one whom I fear because my trust and my confidence is in you. I look to your word that lives inside of me. It lives big in me. I will only speak your word. I'll never speak doubt, unbelief, lack, poverty, insufficiency, Sickness, Sickness, disease, disease, but I'll only speak speak 
What your word says to speak. What your word says to speak. Like Jesus. Like Jesus. The, words speak the words I speak will be the words that you speak. Will be the words that you speak. I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord that, I am victorious. that I am victorious in everything that I do. I win, I win in this life, in this life. And, I and I thank you for it now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Now give the Lord a big shout of praise Hallelujah. tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.